Greetings, I'm Barent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today, we're going to be doing a playthrough of Maximum Apocalypse. This is by Rock Manor Games. I just finished an unboxing of this on my channel. If you missed it, please go check it out to know everything that's inside this. In that unboxing video, I asked for anybody to tell me who I should play with and what scenario. And we did have a majority. So I have two characters and I have our mission available. And it was picked by our community. So I hope you enjoy it. So in this video, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick setup and introduce our characters and also the mission that we're going to be doing. And then we're going to start the playthrough in the next video. If you're excited to see who our two characters are and what mission they're going to be going on, then I need you to meet me at the table. So when setting up Maximum Apocalypse, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and pick our survivors. The first survivor we're going to be was the most voted for character. He was our army ranger who has 25 health. He has a stealth skill of nine, which will come into play during the playthrough. He's also a sharpshooter. He's passive. It's an ability that says start with a sniper rifle equipped. When you starve, discard the sniper rifle. So as we play through the game, we're going to be having to eat. And if we can't, we flip our card over and start taking damage, meaning that we are beginning to starve. So if that ever happens, we're going to lose our sniper rifle. But let's take a look at it. It's right Right here. Our sniper rifle starts with three bullets and it costs two of our inventory slots to have equipped. Now it is long range, which means it has a pretty good range. Now I can't fire in the square it's in, but it can fire two squares away if you start counting. And I'll show you how all this works in the playthrough. It has an action that deals six damage to a target or removes a monster token from the map tile in range. And that'll be key in our scenario. You'll see how that works. Now we're going to put this card right here, right in the middle of these two things to symbolize that it's taking up two of those slots. The next thing you're going to do is grab his standee or miniature. We have actually the miniatures, so I've gone ahead and painted him up pretty close to what he looks like on his card. That was my plan. He's got his sniper rifle and he's ready to go. I'm going to put the standee right there, or the, sorry, the miniature right there, and we're going to put him on the board once it's all set up. We're also going to take its unique deck. Our army ranger has a completely unique deck. We're going to shuffle it up and get it ready for action. We're going to put it right down here in where it says survivor deck. Also, we're going to place a hunger token right down here. You can use tokens, you can use whatever you want. I'm just gonna use these dice. I'm not gonna adjust the number. I'm just gonna move it up and down the track. That's gonna show its hunger and its starvation for our army ranger. Now that is most of the setup. We're gonna continue on. The last thing I need is I'm also gonna put a die up here to symbolize what, how many actions we're using. So this will be our little action track. You are gonna be able to do four actions a turn, but that may change based on some items or some abilities your character has, which is why this thing has a five and a six up here. But for now, I'm just gonna put it in the zero. And again, the number isn't gonna matter. I'm just gonna maneuver the die all around. So that is our army ranger. He is all set to go. Let's find out who our second survivor is. So the second survivor voted for by the community is going to be our surgeon. Our surgeon is going to go ahead and make its way into the game. It's got an action, restore one health to target. So I can do this as an action. Of course, like I said, we get four actions a turn. If I can make a four out of my fingers, four actions a turn. And so we're going to put our surgeon character right down here. Now, of course, we do have these dials. I forgot to give this to the army ranger. This is going to show us the health that our character has. I'm going to place that right here and it's going to go up and down based on taking damage and healing. We're going to put that there. Next, we're going to go ahead and take our miniature. Here he is. Here is the surgeon painted all up and ready to go. Wearing some scrubs just like I do. I work in actually the operating room. No, I'm not a surgeon. I'm actually a nurse, but I get to work in the operating room, which is pretty cool. But enough about me. We're going to go ahead and get our surgeon specific cards. Now there is an alternate version of the surgeon as well, but the miniature is the same as that card. So that's why I chose that one. But there is some health difference and the abilities are usually a little different as well. So there are different characters you can play, even though they're the same character in the game. But we're going to use that surgeon. We're going to go ahead and take the surgeon's deck, mix it up a little bit, and we're going to be all set to go. Put that right there. Next, we're going to go ahead and put our dials on the hunger and the action track. So we're going to put one die right here and we'll put the other die right here in the zero. So our two survivors are ready to go. Let's go find out what our mission is. So the mission that I've chosen by the community that we are going to do is the Jurassic one. So here are the rules for the Jurassic Park set up here, and here's some tips on it. Also, it has a map set up for explaining the stampede that we're going to have to read. So these two things we are going to read before we play the game, but we are going to do the mission triangulation. So let's go ahead and read our triangulation card. So here is our card, and the difficulty on triangulation is hard. It does say 
our base of operations on the mainland is finally coming together. In order to triangulate this transmission, we're going to need your team to boost our signal by repairing three radio towers. Our objective is to repair those three radio towers and return it to the military base. As an action, any player may play a spare parts to repair a tower. Now when we set this up, we're going to be building two maps. One is going to represent the mainland, and this is going to include the van, and one represents the island. So we're going to place a tunnel tile on the island map face up. We're going to place two objective tokens on randomly selected face down island tiles and one on the mainland to represent the radio towers. Now in this mission, we're going to be dealing with a boss. So we're going to shuffle a boss card into the bottom eight cards of the monster deck. So here are the two bosses. We're gonna turn them right down like this, shuffle these up a little bit, give them a little, little shuffle. We're gonna take one of them and put the other one aside. So here's gonna be our boss. I'm gonna return this one to the box. Now we're gonna take the rest of our deck and mix it all up. And then from there, we're gonna take the bottom eight cards and mix that boss into them. So we're gonna take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These are gonna be the bottom eight cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're gonna mix this into this deck. So our boss is gonna be part of these eight cards. And I'm gonna put that on the bottom of our monster deck, which is now complete and ready to go. The next thing we have to do is build our scavenge deck. Now this comes with a neat little token tray thing here to hold the things. It also comes with this neat thing to tell me what is which. Now, of course, as you can see, the, there are three different types of scavenge decks, fuel, food, and ammo and gear. So as you're searching through these decks, that's what you're mostly gonna find when searching inside those decks, but that's not always the case. And you're gonna see by what kind of decks we're gonna be creating. So if we look at our triangulation card, we're gonna flip it over and on the back, it shows us the tiles we're gonna use and also how to build our our scavenge deck. So our scavenge deck is going to consist of a red, green, and blue just like down here. And it's the red deck is going to have these items in it. The green deck is going to have these items and the blue is going to have these. So we're going to go ahead and pick out all of these cards. So if we look here, the first one we're going to be doing is food. The red deck is going to get three, the green deck is going to get nine, and the blue deck is going to get three. So now when creating these decks, you're not just gonna take three food cards and put them in there. You're gonna mix this entire deck up and then you're gonna randomly distribute these. So it's gonna be different as to what has what. And each one of these food cards does have a little bit more food. Some have one, some have two, some have three, even four. Some can like fully heal you probably. I don't know the entire deck, deck of food cards, but we're gonna get pretty much every one of them. So if we look here, we're gonna get three in the red. So we're gonna go one, two, three there. Then we're gonna add nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then one, two, three. So every food card we have is actually being used in this scenario. Now we're gonna go ahead and check out the next one. We're gonna have four, two, and two when it comes to fuel. Now the fuel cards are all the same. There's no difference. We're just gonna go ahead and put four. One, two, three, four, one, two, and one, two. Those are in there. Next, we're gonna go ahead and grab our medical supplies. So it's gonna be two and one. Now there's gonna be no medical found inside the blue deck. So again, we have four medical cards. We're just gonna flip these over, shuffle them up a little bit. We're gonna give two to the red one and one to the green. And then this one we're not actually gonna use this time. And I'm just gonna continue on down and create the rest of our decks. So we're gonna get two antidotes, one antidote for these two decks. And we're gonna also get all the rest of this equipment. Now, any of this stuff, ammo again is very similar to the food. There's all different kinds. So you mix them up and actually put in the ones, put in one for each and then four into this one. But they're gonna be completely different. Now, all the ones down here, like blankets and empty and any type of backpack, these are all actually individual cards. There's no difference in what you use. So just placing them in there is going to be how it's gonna go. So here's our two antidote for the red and one for the green. And at this point, I'm just gonna completely finish off the rest of these scavenge decks. I think you understand how the scavenge deck is set up. So we're just gonna go ahead and finish right like this. So I've gone ahead and completed our scavenging deck except for the last couple cards here. We're gonna go ahead and add some spare parts to each of them. Now remember, this is what we need in order to be able to repair those towers. So where there are two in each one of these decks. Also at the very end of this card, it's asking for ambush cards. So I've gone ahead and grabbed three ambush cards, which are gonna make us draw a monster and immediately discard this card. So there could be a chance that inside these decks, we actually find an enemy. 
Now that we've completed our scavenge decks, I'm gonna go ahead and mix them up and place them off to the side. And we're gonna be drawing from these as we play through the game. Now this part right here is gonna become our board. And that's gonna be made up of all these different tiles that we're gonna go ahead and put out on the board. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through that setup as well. And we're gonna do it according to, of course, our triangulation card. So we're gonna go ahead and set up these 12 tiles to create that mainland and the 13 tiles to create the island. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the van tile off to the side. We are gonna use this tile for sure. This is where we come into the game, but I have to go get the rest of the tiles for the rest of the map. So our bottom one is the island and it's gonna consist of two swamps, two rivers, a shelter, two jungles, an oasis, an amusement park, a fo two forests, also, it's going to have, I don't know what amusement park's doing there, a prison, and then the tunnel. And this is going to be the way that we get between the island and the mainland. So we're going to go ahead and put those over here, and we're going to put them out after we create the actual mainland as well. Now, just like when we were creating the scavenging deck, it looks like this is going to ask for two streets, but there's actually three that we could choose from. So in that case, we are going to mix these up just like we did with the actual scavenging deck and pick two and put one back in the box. So again, we're going to continue and grab all of these. So here are all the tiles to the mainland, and we're going to now set these two up to become the map for our characters to move around on and try to complete their mission. So let's go ahead and do this in fast motion. So now we have our map completely all set up. It kind of recommends you kind of put some holes in it just to kind of create some space and give yourself a little bit of variety in the way the map's made. Otherwise, you could just clump it all together as one big box. Now, of course, our van can come driving in anywhere I wanted to. I could have it come over here, I could have it here, but we're gonna drive it in right up on top. That's gonna be awesome. And that's gonna be the way that our map is set up. Now, of course, we know where the tunnel exit is over here on the island, but we don't know where it is in the mainland. So we gotta find that. We also have to find the military base because that's where we have to get back to once we do set up all those radio towers. And speaking of radio towers, I have to place three tokens randomly kind of out here. So we're gonna go ahead and put one. We'll put one token right there. That looks like a good spot. Here's a token for another one and another token there. Those are the radio towers that we have to repair according to our setup card down here. It says that we have to place two objective tokens randomly selected face down island tiles and one in the mainland to represent these radio towers. So that's gonna be these star tokens right there. Now we're gonna go ahead and place our two characters out on the map. We're gonna put them right in the van. They just arrived on the van. They're about ready to head out into the mainland. Now let's go ahead and look at the specific rules related to the Jurassic Park adventure here. It says, the dinosaurs in this set are very durable. Luckily, many of them are docile. Don't be fooled though, stampedes can quickly wipe out an entire team of survivors. At the start of the game, randomly deal out dinosaur egg tokens. As an action, you can spend a dinosaur egg to safely discard a docile dinosaur. This will help you avoid massive stampedes. And here are those egg tokens that they are talking about. So we're gonna randomly divide these out. Now, I'm not exactly sure how that works. There's four tokens, so I just give two and two, I can give three and one. I, I'm not exactly sure how that all works, or do they each get one? It's not really that clear on this card, so I'm just gonna give each character two dinosaur egg tokens. If that's wrong, please let me know in the comments below. Also, there's a new action, search for eggs. If you're on a forest, swamp, or jungle tile, you can attempt to find a dinosaur egg. As an action, conduct a stealth test. And if you succeed, take an available egg token. If there are no available egg tokens, you cannot take this action. You can freely trade egg tokens like you would any other scavenge card. So there we go. Those are the rules for the Jurassic. And on the back, that has some neat little tips that I think we should probably learn because I'm probably gonna need them to get through this hard adventure. It says, keep an eye on raptors and dilophosauruses. Dinos so they don't set off stampedes. Stunning these beasts is a great tool. Don't feel safe walking amongst a bunch of stegosaurus or triceratops? Spend your eggs to get rid of these larger threats when you have leftover actions to spend. In general, the mainland is much better set to, of tiles to stock up on and scavenge on. The island is more dangerous, but also contains tiles where you can find dinosaur eggs. Remember, you can decide the order in which monsters activate. So you might want to kill a raptor to deal you four damage and kill the other dinosaurs before it spits and sets off a stampede in front of your friend. So those are some neat tips. Let's go ahead and continue some of these rules. So another rule they're going to teach us is stampede. And here's an example. This example 
it took me a couple minutes to figure out how exactly this example works, but once I understood it, it did make sense. For this example, assume that the adventurer is in A and the fireman is in B. So what they meant by that is on the back. So our adventurer is in A and our firefighter is here in B. And then it says right here, that the fireman has a triceratops in front of him. And each character and item attacks differently in this game based on range. And here's the range card right here explaining this. So if we're attacking at short range, it's only in the square we're in. Mid range is gonna be the square we're in at anything adjacent. And long range, like our sniper rifle has, can target up to two adjacent orthogonal spaces away, but it cannot target the space that I'm on. So with this in mind, we're gonna go back to our stampede example here. And it says down here, at the end of my turn, the raptor will activate and will suffer, and I will suffer 13 damage. Because when the raptor attacks, it is going to attack every, you can't really read it right here, but it says it attacks everything on your square. So he's going to actually attack the Triceratops and also the Stegosaurus, which have Stampede on their card. So he's going to hit me for four, but then he's going to cause these two dinosaurs to also hit me for as well for nine points of damage. And so that's why it says here, the Stampede will kill the Raptor for nine damage and deal five damage to the Stegosaurus, which is going to be with our Fireman that's one square away because this, or this, sorry, five squares away to my Stegosaurus and four damage to each of my Triceratops because the Stegosaurus has a mid-range. You can read right there, barely. It says mid-range, so his attack is actually gonna hit everything in its square and adjacent. So that means it's also gonna hit the Fireman and the Stegosaurus there. Once damaging that Stegosaurus, or sorry, that Triceratops, that Triceratops is then going to stampede and hit the Fireman for four. And then when these stampeding creatures are complete, they're actually going to move to the other location. You're gonna see how all this works in the playthrough, but I just kinda of wanted to give you a brief idea what stampede is, and most likely I think I probably made your brain explode because this card made my brain explode when I first tried to read it. So it's easier to demonstrate this in action than it is to actually read through this card, but I wanted you to get an idea of that stampeding can happen and kinda of how it works. It works by this, by a dinosaur attacking a docile creature, that attacking everything near it, and possibly the characters in other squares causing those to go crazy. So it can be an absolute mess if things start happening and you're not prepared for it. So the only thing left is to hand out our two tokens. They're both gonna get two egg tokens and then we have a starting hand of four. So we're gonna deal out four cards to each character and you are allowed to do one free mulligan. We have found surplus ammo, short range, fully reload a weapon. All right, not a bad deal. Grenade, mid-range, deal three damage to all monsters on a tile. Well, we've already learned that damaging a lot of monsters at one time is probably not the best idea in this scenario. Remote mine, place this card on a map tile you occupy. Discard, remove all monster tokens on the tile or deal all monsters on the tile three damage. This is gonna be really good. We're gonna keep that for sure. And recon, flip all adjacent map tiles without triggering their effects. Wow, that's amazing too. I think we're gonna keep these three. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one. We're gonna shuffle it back in, but we get to draw an extra card. And we got the Guile suit. Wow, we got some fantastic cards. So we're gonna go ahead and put our hand right down here, and I'm gonna mix this back into our deck. And now our Army Ranger is all set to go. So now we're gonna move over to our Surgeon. He's gonna gain both of these egg tokens. and draw four cards. One, two, three, four. Let's see what cards he got. He got Adrenaline Shot. Pick a player. That player may take two actions right now. Oh wow, that seems really good. Scrubs. Passive. Increase health restoration by one. You are immune to status effects. Oh, that's really good. Mortar and Pestle. Short range. Curie player in range of all status effects and or reduce hunger by one. Well, that's good. And then scrubs again. So we got two scrubs. So we might want to get rid of one of these scrubs. All right. We're going to get rid of one of the scrubs. I think the rest of these cards are pretty good. Now, of course, we're going to shuffle that back in. But let's see what else we got. Moltev cocktail. Oh, wow. Deal two damage to all enemies in range. Oh, my. All right. We're going to go ahead and put her deck or his deck, sorry, right there. And we're going to go ahead and shuffle this right back in. And he is all set to go. Now, the last thing we need to do is since we drove in on the van, the van, that, that van doesn't look very stealthy. So sadly, as we drive in, both of our characters are going to find a monster from the monster deck. So our army ranger is going to find a raptor. 
deal damage to all non-raptors in range. So this is the same card we found, looked at when it talked about that stampede, but this is a lot bigger version, so you actually see what it says. All right, he's got nine health, and he's going to do four damage when he attacks. We're going to put him up here. This is where all of your enemies are going to go. So our army ranger has a raptor attached. And let's see what our surgeon gets. He gets... Oh, he also gets a raptor attached. So both of them have a raptor that they have to deal with. And neither of them really have weapons that are good against this raptor. I guess I've got a Molotov cocktail. That's going to do two damage to all enemies in range. But we need to do more than two. This thing has nine health. And that's it. We're all set to start Maximum Apocalypse. And we're playing the Dino Edition. We've got some dinos we've got to take care of. Well, hopefully we don't have to take care of them. We just have to fix these radio towers. That's going to be the plan. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the intro and setup video. And now in the next video, we're going to start playing Maximum Apocalypse. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol so you know when the playthrough begins. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. Are you excited for the characters we picked and the scenario? I hope so. I know a lot of people voted for other things, but sadly, I can't do one about everybody. So these are the ones that got the most votes. I hope this is going to be a lot of fun. I really think it's going to be great. Now, sadly, this is a hard, difficult mission, but that's okay. Normally, a lot of the missions make you bring back fuel. We're not going to have to do that. We don't at least have to collect any fuel, but we do have to try to get these towers going and see if we can make it through. Thanks again for watching, and if you're excited to see if our army ranger and our surgeon can make it through the world of the dinosaurs, then I need you to meet me at the table. Time.